In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me, is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. It's interesting the words we pay attention to in life. Usually we pay attention to big words, words that sometimes we don't understand, and we emphasize those larger words. But those usually aren't the ones that matter. <clears throat> it's those small words that change things. Husbands can really understand this. Give you an example between the words do and don't. For instance, when my wife says, don't put my nice knives in the, washing, in the dishwasher. If I hear the word do, put the knives in the dishwasher, which is what I normally do anyways, I get in trouble. Same words, one word changes the whole sentence. Words is or am. But sometimes when we hear these small words that really don't matter to us, we shut down because we know what the person's going to say. So we just don't listen. Like when Jesus says, truly, truly. <clears throat> or if you read the old King James, verily, verily. Usually when we hear these words, we go, ah, Jesus is going to say something that we've heard a million times already. We act as if Jesus is saying, hey, don't worry. I'm just going to say something that you already know. So sit back and relax. Well, rather, when Jesus says the words truly, truly, or verily, verily, or amen, amen, what he's saying is stop talking. Pay attention. This is extremely important stuff. <clears throat> truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Well, Jesus isn't telling the truth, is he? We who are the baptized still die, do we not? Do the baptismal waters make us immortal, living forever on this earth? No. So the Jews were right in their response to Jesus when they said, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died as did the prophets, yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? <clears throat> Do you hear that one word change there? Jesus says you will never see death. The Jews, because as usual they're not listening, say you will never taste death. They didn't listen. Jesus didn't say you'll never die or taste death. He said you will never see death. You'll never perceive death. You'll never fear death. Be anxious about death as long as you keep and treasure my word. Luther says to treasure Jesus' word is to use one's ears willingly to hear the preaching of the word, willingly accept reproof when wrong has been committed, and also to pray, preach, instruct, comfort, reprimand, and give consolation with the tongue. <laughs> do we do this? <clears throat> do we willingly hear the word of God? Or do we question it? Well, that depends on what that word of God is, right? If it's a word of God that agrees with our worldview, then we'll, we're all ears. But if it conflicts with our understandings, then, well, our ears are turned off. We don't listen, especially when reproof comes around, right? When we're corrected of our sinful ways. How many of y'all just love being told you're wrong? Am I the only one? Well, you can ask my wife. I don't like being told I'm wrong either. None of us like being corrected. 
either in the secular realm or by the Word of God. We love the words we love, but we don't listen to the words that disagree with us. So what is this Word of God that you must treasure? What is this Word of God that if you keep, you shall never see death? Well, we can try to come up with a theology of this Word of God. Or better yet, we can take the easy road and just listen to Jesus because He says again, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Do we willingly, meaning joyfully, hear that Jesus is the great I Am? No. We live in this world as if sin, death, and the devil still reign supreme. We fear death. And if you don't believe that, or if you say, No, Pastor, I don't fear death. Uh, don't go to the doctor when your left arm is surging with pain. Just die. When death comes knocking at your door, we rush to the hospital because of what? We fear death. Don't spend any more time denying the fact that you fear it. Just confess it. We love sin. None of us have memorized the Word of God. I love how we go with God's Word. We say we're going to have the goal of reading it this year. Reading the whole Bible in one year this year. That's my goal. Doesn't that just sound silly? It's like saying my goal is to love my wife this year. Or my goal is to treat my children well this year. It's not love. That's the law. But sin, we never have to make goals to sin. We just do it because it feels good. And we worship the devil. We don't worship the one true God. We worship the devil and the idols that he has placed upon this earth. When Jesus says, truly, truly, we say, I know, Jesus, don't worry. I have things under control. I know what you're going to say. I don't need to hear that I'm forgiven again. I don't need you to talk about my justification. I know all that stuff, all that catechism stuff, I know already. Give me something new. Our ears are filled with fear. Our tongues with deceit and our hearts with vengeance. Repent, lest you not hear the word of Christ. Repent, stop listening to the devil and your own feelings. Let Jesus' sent servant fill you with good things today. For Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. This is the word that the baptized keep and fear neither death nor hell. Jesus has no beginning and he has no end. He is and always shall be. But you are temporal. You one day will die. So hear the promise of the eternal I am that you may live forever. The same I am that spoke to Moses in the burning bush and guided David's stone to slay Goliath was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary for you. I am who created the heavens and the earth, ate with sinners for you. I am was betrayed and denied by his blessed disciples for you. I am was scourged for you. I am was mocked, ridiculed, and spit upon for you. I am suffered under Pontius Pilate for you. I am carried the cursed cross to Golgotha for you. I am hung on the cross amongst murderers and thieves for you. What do we do when someone's in their last hour and they don't want to suffer anymore? Do you hand them a cup of coffee to drink? No, you dope them up with morphine so they don't feel anything any longer. 
What did they do to our Lord Christ on the cross when he says, I thirst? Do they hand him some morphine or give him some nice strong wine? No, according to the will of God, the soldier takes the sponge, fills it with vinegar and gall, bitterness to wake him up, and they give it to Jesus to drink, that he may know every single moment of his suffering on the cross, so that even though you and I forget it constantly, our Lord never forgets his love for you. His side was pierced for you and outflowed blood and water, forgiveness and life. I am was laid in the tomb for you. I am descended into hell, forever declaring victory over the devil for you. I am rose triumphant on the third day, eternally victorious over death for you. Yes, stop talking, thinking, and feeling, and just listen. I am Jesus the Christ, crucified, dead, and risen, shall never die again. He died once and for all so that you need not fear death, but welcome it as a blessed departure from this sinful earth. You will die one day. So what does it mean that you will never see death? It means that Jesus suffered the wrath of the Father for you on the cross of Calvary. Death is no longer eternal for you who hear this word and believe it. This world fears death and does everything to prevent it. And when death comes knocking for the unbeliever, the unbeliever kicks and screams like a bratty child who doesn't get the toy they want. They don't want death to come because to them it is the end. But you, the baptized elect, will not be that way. You already died in the font. It is no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives within you. Take heart then, let anxiety and distress flee. For this day you eat and drink the medicine of immortality in the Lord's Supper. Blessed are you, for yours is the word of God. You will never see death the way this world does. Christ snatched you up in the waters of holy baptism. He has no intention of ever letting go. Truly, truly, so hush up and listen, I say to you, I, in the stand and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, proclaim this good news to you today, that though you are sinful, your Savior loves you. Though you doubt, He forgives. Be at peace. You are absolved. You shall never die again. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.